First thing we're going to do is, you might have learned long ago, there's things called conductors, there's things called insulators. Well, what you learned probably in elementary school was a conductor or an insulator at typical 110 voltage, household voltage. We're going to talk about what a conductor and insulator is at 7,200 volts, which you probably would run into if you were going to deal with this equipment after, say, a major storm or any outage event. So first thing they're going to do is they're going to remove this door and we're going to stick some materials to bridge that gut out. First thing we're going to talk about is wood. Typical stick, we just cut it off this morning. This stick, I remember when I went through elementary school, they always told us wood is an insulator. You could take wood, put it in an electric circuit, it would not complete that circuit. But unfortunately, this myth at 7,200 volts could significantly harm or even kill you. That's why we're asking you to not use wood or any sort of object to try to touch our overhead lines or equipment. Now you see he bridges this, look at the light, light comes on. That 7,200 volts is easily flowing through that wood. So there, wood is a conductor at 7,200 volts. Next thing we're going to talk about is this service wire. You may see this running from an overhead transformer, like designated on our trailer right there, to your house. It has this really black tar material, jacket material on the outside, and you will think, oh, well, that's an insulator. It's got to be an insulator. It's protecting that wire in case somebody ever went up and grabbed it. You might be doing maintenance on your house, paint and siding, and you're coming very close to this material with that false sense of security that it has an insulation value. Doug's going to show you what would happen if you made direct contact. Feeds right through that material, light comes on at the house. That black tar material is actually to protect the wire itself. It has no protection value for you. Stay away from any overhead lines, even if you think they're secondary voltages. Next thing we're going to talk about is a kite string. I just pulled it out of water, so I'll give you that. But the reason we put it in water is because it would just burn up if we weren't have it wet and damp. But also, when you have kids and you're flying kites, typically, if, unless you're a professional, the kite string and the kite are lying on the ground, dragging through the mud, the dirt, and the water. And that's how you'll find it. So all of them debris can actually have electricity tracked down the kite string. Remember from elementary science class as well, electricity always just wants to find the easiest path to ground. So if you become that easiest path to ground, unfortunately, you're going to feel it. If you have little kids or you're an adult and you like to fly kites, please look up first. Make sure there are no overhead power lines. Doug's going to demonstrate whether or not this kite string will actually feed electricity through it. All right, it doesn't even sizzle. So unfortunately, if you were flying kites, that kite went into an overhead conductor, came down that kite string, go through your body, through your feet, into the ground, you are the easiest path to ground. Another phenomenon we would like to talk about is you may drive down the streets and you'll see a bird just perched on top of an overhead wire. Is that bird a conductor or an insulator? Obviously, it's a conductor. It has that full blunt of that 7,200 volts going through it, but it's not grounded. Remember, it only presents a danger when you're on a, a path to ground. 